And with that, that's uh, basically what we're doing with the rate, electric rate case. If you have questions? Questions? Mark? Um, so just going back to recap, you had mentioned that you lost $300 million in the, to due to storms and uh, other uh, disasters. We didn't lose it. We actually had to make had, new investments. Had to invest. how it, was it was lost That's capital, right. but it, it, then you had to invest. It was spent money on behalf um, of our customers. And then um, you've mentioned maybe spending $400 million for wind, <coughs> which I think is a great idea. Um, in that same period, you've uh, sold off your transmission part uh, for, for extra 104 million. And just recently here you mentioned another 65 million in excess for selling a, a payload plant. Okay, so now we're at uh, almost 179, or actually 169 million of sales in the last couple of years. And you're proposing a $179 million uh, a year increase. And in four years, the increase would pay for the $300 million invested plus the $400 million wind farm if you didn't ask for another increase, but you're going to ask for another increase for that. See, we can't make that decision on our own. That decision has to be made in the context of the utility board and a rate case and a hearing and this whole process. I think it's probably, I mean, it's, it's so definitely going to happen. We're going to, all of, we're going to ask for it. All of those issues will be wrestled with, but we can't do them until we ask for a rate case at the utility board. So then we start sorting through all these issues and uh, untangling how those monies should be and will be applied. David. Do you want to tell us what you just reported in your first quarter net earnings for 2009? Oh, we did um, that. that um, Does 72.6 million sound good? There was a cents per kilowatt hour is what I was thinking of. It was um, your net in earnings. the neighborhood of 60 cents, if I'm not mistaken. But, but your net earnings. Don't hold me to that number. I don't recall it. I didn't I didn't participate in the phone call, so. It was 72.6 million. Now, the previous year in the first quarter, do you think you did more or less? 72.6 million. I, I'm quite frank, I don't know right you now. You did less. So you had an increase this first year quarter of about $4 million in your net earnings. Um, even with all that has happened in 2008. And what really concerns me is, is uh, uh, basically comes right out of the words of your own CEO, Bill Harvey, and this interview was taken 18 days ago. So unless something has drastically changed, uh, basically it says, uh, this is Bill Harvey speaking, industrial sales were weaker than expected. We are lowering our retail sales forecast for 2009 and by an additional three percentage points. Despite the challenges presented by the economy, we still expect to meet our original earnings guidance for the utility business as a result of aggressive cost cutting and uh, efforts that are constrained only by our assurance not to compromise safety and reliability. In our non-regulated businesses, we see a resurgence occurrence in the renewable markets and RMT has recently signed several contracts for wind construction projects that we expect to generate increased revenue in the coming months. We believe our most difficult quarter is behind us and we anticipate producing stronger results for the balance of the year. So when I hear that, and I hear that you folks are increasing rates, um, to me it says you want to keep your shareholders happy more than you want to keep your customers happy. And I find it very hard to justify any type of rate increase, especially in this market. Uh, one because we have a lot of people that are going to be unemployed very soon, if they aren't already. There are people on a fixed income, very small income, and even uh, if it looks modest to you, it might not be modest to them. Second, if you have uh, a decrease in, in, your, in your industrial market as far as sales, which is uh, what your CEO pointed out too, it seems counterintuitive that if you want to increase that, that you would want to increase your rates on them as well. Well, you're, you're right. You know, we couldn't have if we were to pick a time to go for a rate case, it wouldn't have been you know, March 17th to file it. Um, uh, the conditions weren't apparent necessarily you know, until late last fall that this, this uh, economic uh, downturn was as severe as it was going to be. And even in January and February, uh, it took the, the markets and everything took a significant uh, drop. 
So this is a constant balancing act for a utility. Uh, we recognize that it does, uh, and we empathize with, with the hardship that it, it, that it does create from time to time on our customer base, uh, especially folks on fixed incomes. Um, on the other hand, we have over $600 million that we're not earning a rate of return on, and so you have to balance those between whether or not what your earnings are going to be in the future and what you should earn on investments that you make. And, you know, we can't pick our, our uh, service territory up and move it to the Sun Belt like an industry can. So if we're going to thrive as a utility, <clears throat> we have to nurture that industry here. And I think Alliant Energy has been a good partner in West Branch in helping develop industry. Um, and the industrial park out here uh, has got some businesses in it. I think we help participate in recruitment in. So it is a constant balancing act between um, the rate and the revenue side and being able to um, raise capital on behalf of our customers. So if our stock is unattractive, it's going to be very difficult for us to raise capital to build a power plant or to be able to have uh, that new upgrade that takes place for reliability, for safety, and all those other issues. So you're right, it is a constant uh, balancing act that we go through. And the one thing, uh, too, you know, when it comes to, uh, because you, <coughs> what you really are, you're in, a, uh, you're in a PR battle in some sense, because I think that's some of what uh, the Iowa Utility Boards uh, is going to be dealing with with uh, all the public comments on it, right? And uh, I don't think there's anybody in this room who's uh, retirement uh, benefits and portfolio have done very well in the past. So when I, when I see that it's going to hurt, hurt your shareholders, it's really hard to shed a tear. You know, um, I don't know, I, I, I hope that the Iowa Utility Boards takes everything into consideration and the fact that your own CEO has a pretty uh, positive outlook on the future uh, Kind of indicates to me that maybe this rate is this rate increase is not the right thing at this time. Um, I guess I would just ask you a, a very simple question: If this rate increase <coughs> is rejected, I mean completely, and you have to uh, refund that cash back, what is that going to do to Alliant? Do you think Alliant will be a thing of the past, or do you think you will survive? Can't answer that. I'm not part of that team that addresses Plan B, so I don't know what their uh, what their ideas are uh, if the utility board would reject it. I don't know the answer to that. 